Hello, it's Tim from Toy Tinker Tim. In this episode, I'm taking a look at the Spacewalk mystery set from the G.I. Joe Adventure Team line. This was from 1970-71. This is a set that I always thought was so cool as a kid and even as an adult. I never had one, so this is one I acquired in more recent years. So in this 1970 box set, for $7.99, you got an action figure with lifelike hair, suit, the boots, helmet, propellant gun, oxygen chest pack, a wrist camera, the tether, a record, mini comic, and of course, the space capsule. From these NASA photos of the 1965 Gemini spacewalk, you can see the detail Hasbro put into the propellant gun and the oxygen chest pack for their figure. If you're picking up a set or shopping for one here, here are some detail things to keep an eye out for. This little nub on the end of the mic cord is something that's often broken off. The space helmet has some nice details as well. Uh, one thing to check on is on the inside of the helmet, there were originally the white uh, foam rubber uh, cushion pads on either side of the head there. Uh, they're missing on this one too, just a little bit of remnant in there. Propellant gun, uh, a lot of times this bottom loop section here is either cracked or it's totally broken off. And uh, the wand that clips on to the top, a lot of times that's missing or the ends might be broken off of that as well. The reverse of the oxygen chest pack has these black suction cups and the idea was being that you could attach your figure by these to a smooth surface to give it a floating like appearance. The orange tether line is a very flexible vinyl material and it's similar to the air hoses in other G.I. Joe sets. The wrist mounted camera here, um, this was also used in other sets by Hasbro for G.I. Joe. With the uh, silver space boots, like any of the boots from the G.I. Joe line, the back seam at the boot a lot of times will be split uh, from the feet sliding in and out. The heels will kind of crack that out. Uh, also check in the soles of the shoes in the toe of the boot area. A lot of times there's punctures or teeth marks, things of that nature. From what I've seen and read, the space sets usually came with a blonde haired G.I. Joe figure. So regardless of the color of the hair, here are some good points to look at when you're considering buying one of the figures. Stress cracks in the plastic are common, and for me personally, as long as they don't cause a failure in where the limbs connect, 
it's not a big issue. The figures are gonna be wearing uniforms anyhow. And the knee stress cracks are the most common ones to find. The trademark information, copyright info on the butt cheeks are a good way to kind of date and um, give you more info on the figure because those have varied and changed over the years. In addition to the hair flocking, you're checking for hair rubs or bald spots and uh, the astronaut figures, regardless of a hair color, were beardless. The spacesuit in this set has a single zipper. Uh, the American flag is embroidered and is sewn onto the shoulder. And there is a eyelet clasp at the back of the collar to help secure around the base of the helmet. And the suits are somewhat fragile with age. The metallic material will often be cracked or peeling away from the backing material. And just handling the suit, it's very stiff and crinkly and uh, it gives you a feeling of something is going to crack or tear just by handling it. It's a very crunchy feeling. A way that I've found to make things a little bit easier to get this spacesuit onto the figure is I just unplug the hand from the forearm and uh, slide the arm down through the sleeves and then put the hands back on uh, because of the stiffness of that spacesuit and uh, just this kind of fear that something's going to rip or tear in there. So taking a look at uh, items also in the set, I don't have these, but they are the instruction sheet. There's a uh, 45 RPM record. They came in an orange, yellow, or black vinyl. And the mini comic. The 45 records had one side that talk about the Mercury space flight and preparations for launch. And the other side has recordings of actual first American orbital space flight. We take a look at some views of the box art for the set. Space Capsule is really a work of art. It was created by Italian-born Marcel Jovin, and he worked for Ideal Toy in the 50s. Um, he had created also some coin and medallion work uh, in the later years, but he also had created the Visible Man and Visible Woman model kits that a lot of people are probably familiar with. The clear sliding canopy on the space capsule here is one of the other things to check on for cracks and scratches and sometimes just totally missing. A space capsule is also designed to float in water, so I'm sure a lot of these saw some time floating in bathtubs here. Uh, it was to go through the play function of a splashdown. The space capsule comes in about 14 inches tall. And if you have one that is a white color instead of the blue interior plastic, uh, you've got a nice one here. It is a glow-in-the-dark one that was exclusive to Sears, uh, and that was back in the late 60s. strapped in and 
ready for his mission and then hooking in his mic cord into the capsule. That's my episode here for the Spacewalk Mystery Set. I hope you were able to learn a few things along the way with it. And um, remember to show your support, hit the subscribe button. And as always, thanks for watching.